Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Luke, Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15, we'll be looking at verses 11 through 24. Luke chapter 15, verses 11 through 24. The title of the message is, Thank You, Father. Thank You, Father. Luke chapter 15, verses 11 through 24. Thank you, Father. The Bible says, and as you know, this is a famous story, parable of the lost son, the prodigal. And he says, a certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many higher servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy higher servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe, and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet, and bring hither the fatted calf, and kill it, and let us eat, and be merry. For, for this my son was dead, and is alive again. He was lost, and is found, and they began to be merry. Brother Richard, can you please pray for the message? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you for this day, Lord, that we get to gather here together, uh, brothers and sisters in Christ, Lord. We thank you for the Bible-believing King James uh, Church, Lord, that you placed here at local church. Thank you that we get the opportunity to come here, Lord, to serve you, to sing praises unto you, and most importantly, to hear a good preaching, Lord. We pray you please fill Pastor Jay with the Holy Spirit. Please use him mightily. Please speak through him directly to us, Lord, so that us Christians may be better Christians in this God-forsaken world, Lord. We're living in dark times, Lord, and we pray that you please continue to use us as the light and the salt in this world, Lord. Father, we pray that we clear, you help clear our mind, clear our heart, and open our ears, and be attentive to the preaching, Lord, that we may forget about any of our worldly affairs, any matters, anything that may take us away from the preaching, Lord. We pray that you help us to clear it out of our mind Amen. and to solely focus on your word. Father, we thank you for the King James Bible. Amen. Thank you for the preservation. Thank you that we have it, Lord God, and that we may read it and learn from it and adhere to it, Lord. Father, we pray you help us to abstain from all the parents of evil, Lord. Help us to be holy unto you. Help us to obey your commandments. Father, we thank you for your only begotten Son, Lord Jesus Christ, who lived a sinless life, coming down into this filthy earth, Lord, and shedding all of your precious blood, that your blood atones for all of our sins, Lord. We thank you. It's the greatest love that anybody can ever display, anybody that can ever give to us, Lord. And we thank you for your compassion. We thank you, Father, for loving us first, 
Though we don't deserve it, because we're just filthy, wretched, wicked sinners, Lord. And we thank you for saving us from hell. Thank you for saving us from eternal lake of fire. Thank you that we may never perish there, Lord. And please help us that even though we are saved through your precious blood and by your grace and mercy through faith, thank you. Uh, help us to not continue to sin against you, Lord God. Please convict us with the Holy Spirit. Guide us with the Holy Spirit. Lead us with the Holy Spirit so that we may be holy unto you, Lord. We're not perfect, Lord God. But you, Lord Jesus Christ, is the perfect example that we are to ever follow. And please help us to follow you. And that's what it means to be a Christian, to follow you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for everything that you've done for us. And we pray that you protect us here today, Lord God, from the spiritual and the physical dangers of the world, Lord. And Lord, we pray that you come soon. Take us into heaven, Lord. Even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Father. Today is a Father's Day here. And without saying, father's influence on a child is immeasurable. Many times, child is who they are because of their father. Yes. Obviously, mother's influence is great as well. However, father, as the head of the household, may have the greatest influence. The story that we just read, the parable of the lost son, you see that it's a great picture of salvation, and it's a great picture of backslider. However, you know, when you look at any verses in the Bible, as if you were at the camp, you know, Brother Gorski was constantly reminding you as historical, right, doctrinal, or practical where you could use it spiritually. So as far as the parable itself, you know, the doctrine is something else. It's a picture of Israel as God's son. So just know that in your head. So prodigal means what? You've heard it many times. Prodigal is a spendthrift, someone who wastes what he has and throws it away. Waster. Many times you and I are just like prodigal son. We waste whatever God has given to us. Yes. When you approach this from a spiritual aspect, you could see right away that we have to be more thankful to our Father Amen. in heaven. Especially if you have trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have Father in heaven. You know, this day and age, we have too many divorces going on. Yeah. You know, 50%, we've heard statistics when the pandemic started, it grew to 70%. Right. So one thing for sure is that we have many children who does not have father in their lives. Yeah. And because of that reason, many times they join gangs, they join clubs, yes. they just want to be belong. They want to have a father figure in their life. And many times, those wrong decisions lead them to destruction. Yeah. Many of the inmates in prison did not have father's influence or good father's influence. Right. And if you are a father here, and if you are listening online, and if you are a father, you have the greatest responsibility. Amen. Number one thing is that you need to get saved if you aren't saved. Yes. I mean, what are you doing? Just sitting around, not getting saved. If a father gets saved in a household, from a statistics that I've heard in the past, 80% or more of the time, the whole family gets saved. Amen. Because father gets saved. Right. Head of the household. And percentage decreases when it's mother getting saved and trying to convince or trying to persuade, trying to witness fathers to get saved. Right. Many times, man are very stubborn. Yes. If you do not accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, Father, very likely that you won't accept him for a long, long time. That's true. Many times in the farmlands, farmers or anybody, or if, you know, just working people, 
they say, I'm, I was busy all my life supporting my family. So I don't have any time for, you know, God and stuff. I mean, that's a full talking. Yeah. God gives every father a chance to get saved. And if they don't get saved, and if you're a father and you, didn't, you haven't gotten saved, you're a fool. Amen. You're sending your family, if they're not saved, to hell. So you have a great responsibility. And when we talk about father, we can talk about priests. Priests are not your father. Yeah. Just because you go into a confession bucket and say, Father, he's not your father. In Matthew 23, 9 says, and call no man your father upon the earth. I mean, all these things happening, if you were to study, they just want to have control over their people. That's why. Why would you call a man a father? For one is your father, which is in heaven. That's it. If you trust that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, I mean, you have a Father in heaven yeah. once and for all. Amen. So if you do not have a physical earthly father, either they passed away, you never seen them, or you don't see them anymore, you know, at least you have a comforting thing that God the Father is your Father. Yes. If you need a male figure who you want to lead you, go to God the Father. Amen. You don't have to find big brothers and, you know, or the clubs over there, right? No. Boy Scout. No. I mean, a lot of times bad things happen, yeah. right? Yeah. It's all being exposed, right? right? Whether it's in a Catholic church, Boy Scouts, even just a regular church out there. Yeah. A lot of kids get messed up. Amen. Because... They trust that male figure wholeheartedly. And those male figures, you know, perverse them, yes. disgraces them, and downright, you know, hurts them yes. for all their life. Yes. There was a story where a young man, you know, was abused by a Catholic priest in California, and it messed him up. So he was so messed up, he found where this priest was living and just shot him dead. I don't think the court, you know, found him guilty because all the emotional and physical abuse that he had to endure just messed him up. And if you're a father, and if you're going to be a father, you have to realize this. Your attitude, your actions, usually determines how your family goes. Yes. Well, I should say, it determines where your family goes. It's going to go to where it's serving the Lord or it's going to downhill, where it's going to serve the devil, the world, and the flesh. Right. And as a man, you have to realize that there's a role and responsibility that I have to follow no matter what. At the camp, Pastor Jim was talking about setting up rules in your life. Amen. And as a father, if you don't have any rules in your life, you're a loser. Amen. I mean, you're no good backslidden Christian. How can a father who leads the family do not have any rules within the family? Amen. you got to set up rules. You set up rules first, and your family will follow. Amen. And here are some of the quotes regarding importance of a father's role in the family. A father is someone you look up to no matter how tall you grow. Amen. You always will look up to father. I mean, Ethan could be 6 feet 5 or 6 feet 4. He's going to look up to Pastor Stevenson. Amen. Or else, you know, he's going to get some discipline in his life, right? Yeah. Same, yeah. And no matter how tall you grow as a Christian, you have someone to look up to. Amen. That's why I always look up. Look up at the Father. Don't look down. Average fathers have patience. Is that true, fathers? Average fathers have patience. Good fathers have more patience. Great fathers have an ocean of patience. So as fathers, you need to have patience. Because you are quick to anger more than mothers. 
You're kind of wired that way. You, don't, you rarely see a mother explodes over and over and over. It's usually the father just explodes over and over and over because men are known to have less patience than women. Then if you want to be a great father, you need to have an ocean of patience. And that's something, you know, everyone has to work on. Yes. And this one, you know, father, fathers, think about it. The most important thing a father can do for his children is to love their mother. Amen. How many fathers really love your wife? And it's, it wasn't set by a woman. It was set by a man. Their own experience, Henry Ward Beaker said it. And another one, Theodore Hasberg said also, the greatest thing a father can do for his children is to love their mother. Amen. If you're a father, if you don't love your wife, that's the worst thing that you could do to your children. Why do you think there is a vicious cycle of children just following the path of their fathers? Yeah. If father was a drug addict, very high probability that he becomes or she becomes a drug addict. Children. Right. If father was a whoremonger, cheater, sleeping with prostitutes, you know, all the adulterer, yeah. their children becomes adulterers and whoremongers. True. If father is a gambler, their children become gambler. If father is a white beater, their children become white beater many yeah. times. Why? Because you're not doing the most important thing. Besides from getting saved and following the word of God, you have to love your wife. Amen. And you have to show it yes. in action to your children. You know, when you see children, as they grow up, they say, you know what? My father beat my wife, so I never want to be like my father. But they become same father. I want to be faithful to my wife, unlike my father, who was always out and about. And they become cheaters, and sometimes they become worse cheaters than their father. You have to make sure, fathers... You have to love your wife, who's the mother of your children. You have to. Any man can be a father, but it takes someone special to be a dad. I'm sure you heard of that. You could repro reproduce, right? But it takes a lot of character to be a father and a dad, right? Father's role is to be the spiritual leader. Fathers, are you a spiritual leader in your family? A moral exemplar. Do you have that character? Do you stand in your morals? And the loving guy. I mean, are you loving? I mean, we're not talking about being sissy out there. But as a man, as a father, are you a loving father? Why? Because fathers are supposed to be the loving guide for his children. Amen. You know, when you see a lot of children, if they're rude, they're senseless, they're full of anger, full of hate, full of critical spirit. It's because a lot of times their fathers don't show any love to their children. Amen. Simple as that. Yes. Then as a man, as a father, as a future father, I mean, are you a spiritual leader? Are you a morally exemplary person? And do you have loving heart? I mean, it's not only you, you love, you know, things that you only want to love. You have to love everything the Bible says to love. Yes. Simple as that. The heart of a father is the masterpiece of nature. Antoine Francois Prevost, right? Your father is supposed to be a, as a father, your heart is supposed to be a masterpiece of nature. Think about it. I mean, God the Father showed his love on Calvary once and for all, right? Amen. John 3, 16. But God said, I mean, this guy, he's not, I'm not even sure if he's saved. He said, heart of a father is the masterpiece of nature. When you see the heart of God the Father, it's a masterpiece. Yes. 
It's something that if we were to be drawn in a painting, you look at it and you're like, wow. You know, your jaw just drops. But is your fatherhood a masterpiece? Is it even a piece, right? Mm. Many times it's just broken glasses. Yeah. You know, it's just garbage out there. A father's words. So fathers, man, think about what comes out of your mouth. A father's words are like a thermostat that sets the temperature in the house. Man, many times your house is too hot. Clamor, anger, dispute, argument, criticism all over the place because of your words. Many times your homes are igloo, right? It's so cold, yeah. right? It's like somewhere in Arctic or Antarctica. Why? Because your words are so cold. Your words determine the thermostat of your household. Yeah. There's so much a mother can do. Yeah. But God set it up that way, fathers. If you're already too hot or cold, and you have made a negative influence in your family, mothers can really rectify or correct it. They just want to pacify it a little bit. So remember, fathers, your words are like a thermostat that sets the temperature in the house. Right. And lastly, but this is, you know, we get it from our Father in heaven. A father's love is eternal and unconditional. Amen. When we look at the story of prodigal son, you see a father whose love is eternal and unconditional. I mean, we serve a risen Savior. We have God the Father whose love is eternal and unconditional. Think about it. Something that you and I can experience for all eternity. His love. You know what's the saddest thing when you see children? When they don't receive love from their fathers. Yeah. They seek it from everybody else. Yes. That's why little young girls, they get pregnant at an early age. They get dumped by sleazy guys. Why? Because fathers do not show any love to them, godly love to them. Why do you think this adolescent kids, boys, always get in trouble? Because fathers are not like fathers. They are always, you know, like, you know, being a disciplinary, it's not bad as long as you do it according to the word of God. But if you're out there to, you know, take out your anger on your children, fathers, whether it's verbally or whether it's physically, not because they need to be disciplined, because you're angry and you need someone to take it out on, then you're ruining their life yeah. once and for all. How many fathers listening right now have ruined your children's life? I mean, especially, you know, if you're, if you're up there in age, think about it. And even the young ones, right? The kids coming to our church. I mean, how much influence do you think pastors, pastor's wife, and leaders can have on their children? Enough so that on Sunday, they know what's right. They hear some godly preaching, study word. But however, rest of the week, they're at home. 95% responsibilities on you, fathers. Yeah. Stop looking at your mothers. Stop looking at your wife. I mean, you're just looking at them like, you know, bag of excuses. <laughs> it's because of her. It's because of her. You know, when the problem is with you. Right. I mean, it's yeah. probably the, one of the most profound sayings of a person could ever say. Bob Jones Sr. said, the problem is with you. And fathers, problem is with you. Man, problem is with you. It's not your wife. They're the weaker vessel anyways. Yes. You know, then change your, you know, gender like how everyone's doing, right? I <laughs> mean, could you like man? Why are you acting like, you know, woman? And that's why many times women act as father. Yes. Especially... I don't know about other cultures, but I'm Korean. Yeah. 
So I know how it is in Korean household. That's right, sister, right? Father just say, I work. I provide money to the family and the you know, possessions. So raising children is all up to my wife. Wow, I mean, sometimes you ask kids, right? You know, have you seen your dad? Uh, yeah. Before I sleep, maybe. When I go to school. Oh, what about the rest of the day? I don't know. And then who makes all the decisions? Who teaches? Who does everything? Well, my mom. She's like my mom, but she's also like my dad. I mean, if your children ever testifies that my mom's like my father, and you, there's a father at home, then that father is not living like a father. Right. That's not a man, right? That's uh, just the uh, dirt out there. Yeah. You, know, you should just call yourself a Joe Dirt. You know, stop saying, you know, I'm a father. If you're not acting like a father, then you're not a father. Amen. Your name only. You know, you're just... I don't know, dirt out there. I mean, you have to wake up. You know, at the summer camp, it was all about making decisions when we came down to the valley, right? You got to make decisions. I mean, what kind of father are you going to be? What kind of man are you going to be? I mean, young men out there, you know, Lord willing, one day you'll marry, you'll have family, and you're going to be a father if Lord tarries. Then you got to start early. You got to build your character. You gotta be a morally exemplary Christian. Yes. There's no excuse that little Max is only 10. He goes, you know what? I'm gonna just act like a mother. You know, I'm not gonna make any decisions in my life. I'm not gonna stand for what's true. That's not gonna work. Then little Max is gonna turn into a big Max with the same character. Right. Then you, young people here, you know, every young man, you have to realize that. One day, if I were to become a father, what kind of father am I going to be? Because you can't just jump start whenever you feel like it. That's not how spiritual walk is. Spiritual walk is all about taking one step at a time, building one step at a time. That's why you have to start early. Thank you, Father. Can you really say thank you, Father? Right? Can your children say, thank you, Father, to you today? I mean, you definitely have to say, thank you, Father God. Amen. But can your children say, thank you, Father? Mm-hmm. You have to examine your heart on this Father. Say, don't try to wait for your family to give you a gift, right? Hey, where's my gift? I'm a dad, you know? I mean, do you think you really deserve a, deserve a gift, man? I'm out there, the way you've been behaving as a father, past year, past month, past week, past days, or past hall since you got married. I mean, many, many of you don't deserve no gift. Right. You should get some spanky, right? Amen. To wake up. Man, you need that, you know, Line whack up. on the face to just wear well, cold water yeah. or ice on your face or, you know, dump in the coldest water out there. To wake up. And in order to truly thank God the Father, fathers and everyone else, point number one, you have to realize how unthankful you've been. Yes. In order to be truly thankful, you have to recognize how unthankful you've been. Let's go back to Luke again. Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15. You and I have to come to this state today. Luke chapter 15, verse 17. You got to wake up. I mean, you have to wake up. And you have to realize that you live a riotous living. Look at verse 17. And when he came to himself, when he came to himself, that's a great statement. This young man was out of his mind, doing everything that he wanted. And the world was telling him, you're the man. Right, fathers? You love hearing that, right? Man, you love hearing that. You are the man. 
you want your ego to go up, and your wives are doing it just for your own sake, right? They don't want to hear any more, you know, blabbering from you, right? Yeah, 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 you're the man, you're the man, to shut you up for a little bit, right? And this young man had that same character. He was out of his mind, he was out in the world spending all the money, right? You know, spending his life with liquor, drugs, you know, gambling, woman, you know, everything. And people said, man, you're living. You are the man. But once the money ran out, what happened? They all disappear. They all disappear. And when he was by himself, when he was knocked out like a boxer, and he realized after 10 count, oh, man, where am I, right? Yeah. He came back to himself, and he says, man, how many higher servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare? And I perish with hunger. He came to himself. He realized who he was. He realized how unthankful of a son he was. He realized how he took everything for granted. I mean, doesn't that describe you? I mean, doesn't yes. that describe us? Doesn't that describe me? How unthankful you've been. You just don't realize when you're unthankful, obviously it's a sin. And when you commit sin, who are you committing sin against? You're committing sin against God. Every time you're unthankful, you're committing sin against God. Amen. How in the world can you say thank you, Father, when you're constantly sinning against Him? Get rid of your unthankful attitude. I mean, it's the, one of the most preached subjects out there, be ye thankful. But are you really thankful in your life? Are you thankful for every little thing? And as fathers, are you thankful that God has given you responsibility and accountability to lead a household? Amen. Or are you like, ah, oh, Lord, you gave me a bad wife. Lord, my children is just no good. Lord, that's why I don't want to spend time at home. I just want to be somewhere else. And Lord's like, you fool, right? Yes. And you're like, oh, God, but thank you for everything, everything. You're not. You're a very unthankful person. Right. You have to realize this, you know, brethren. When you realize that you're sinning against God, you're going to sin less. Simple as that. Yes. That's it. I mean, Muhammad said you can't sin against God. Great fool, yeah. right? Whenever you sin, you sin against God. Amen. We have a great example of Joseph, right? Joseph. Right. Joseph said, how then, when he was seduced by Potiphar's wife, this is what Joseph said, how then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Amen. I mean, man... When it comes to being faithful, just think about number one thing, right? How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God before you look at another woman with lustful eyes? Yes. I mean, mothers, sisters, same thing before you look at another man. Amen. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God in Genesis 39 and 9? That's why churches are not pure anymore. Even within the Bible-believing church, people are unthankful. People are full of lust, pride, yes. right? Yes. Lust of the eyes, right? Amen. Pride of life, lust of the flesh. Yes. Why? Because you don't remember. You don't put this in your heart. Man, every sin that I commit, I'm committing against God. Amen. How can I testify that thank you, Father, unless you get right with the Lord? In the Bible, many people say, I have sinned. I have sinned. You and I say, I have sinned because you get caught, right? Mm. It's not like it comes out of your pure heart. You say, I have sinned many times because someone exposed you. Someone found out that you were doing something wrong. Whether it's your wife, whether it's your husband, your children, you know, your colleagues, or whoever it is, your cousins. Pharaoh said, I have sinned. Where is he now? Saul said, I have sinned. Where is he now? Balaam said, I have sinned. Where is he now? Judas said that, I have sinned. 
they wind up dead and in hell. Amen. Simple as that. Confession of sin is not enough. That's why some of you come to the altar. Maybe you are at the summer camp and you're at the altar every single day. And when pastors teach you, I mean, preach that, you got to, you know, sling it and then cast it up once and for all. You weren't casting it off. You're just holding it. You're just saying sorry. You're just like, you know, you know, Pastor Stevens preached. Like you're just hiding it in the attic so that you can't see for now. You didn't get rid of it. Repentance isn't sorrow for sin. I mean, evangelical repentance is what? Knowing who you really are. You're nothing but a no good sinner on your way to hell. You can't save yourself, no. right? Job said, I abhor myself. Isaiah said, I'm a man of unclean lips. Peter said, depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. That's repentance. Realizing that you are that wicked sinner. Yes. You do those things because you are that sinner. Right. Then you have a chance. Then, as a backslidden Christian, you, you have a chance to get right with the Lord. Amen. You have to remember this. The way of transgressors is very hard. It's hard, according to Proverbs 13, 15. Your life is hard right now because... You're a sinner. Yes. You constantly sin. That's just very hard. Yeah. The way of transgressor is hard. Whether, I mean, I tell you, any man, even woman, any person who's kind of old now, even if you are after early 20s, now you're in your mid-20s and later, one thing that everyone wants to do if they could do it again, they want to go back in time and change some stuff. That's what everyone wants to do. If I could do it over again, I want to go to that age, and I want to change some of the things that I did. I want to change the decisions that I've made. Because, because of the wrong decisions that you've made, because you've been so unthankful, especially after you got saved, your life has been very hard. What do you expect? You think your right life will be rosy? Your life will be full of blessings? I mean, thank God that there's still blessing because of God's mercy and grace. But it's been very hard. Spiritually speaking, right? Marital speaking. Children speaking. Your cousin, your work. Everything's been hard. Why? Because you've been unthankful. You've just been a sinner, backslidden sinner for such a long time. And then you accept it as is. That's the saddest part. Fathers, men, women, children. That's not how you live a Christian life. No. Defeat it every single day. Oh, man, you know. I don't want to face tomorrow. But, you know, suicide is wrong. So I'll just go another day. Maybe I'll go to church. Maybe I'll bless. I'll be blessed a little bit. I'll have some, you know, chit chat, you know, with some friends, right? And maybe I could dig up some dirt. Maybe I'll hear some gossip. Hmm. You know, that's my life now. What kind of Christian life is that? Pathetic. I mean, you think people see Jesus in you? No. And people see devil in you yeah. and the world and the flesh. That's where they're like, you know what, man, I don't want to be no Christian. Their life is worse than mine. Yeah. yeah. I mean, what kind of testimony is that? Why? Would somebody want to be Christian when a bunch of Christians are worse than them? Their life is a hot mess. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you're, you've been unthankful. You know, one thing that you see from prodigal son is that when he said he'll do it, he did it. Man, this guy had that character. I'm going to be a riotous person. I'm going to do it. I'm going to go back to my dad. I'm going to do it. That's the character that you have to learn, fathers. Yes. If you're going to say, I'm going to thank my father, God, all the time, then you got to do it. Amen. I mean, learn from prodigal son. And he's younger than many of you fathers here. Probably all of you fathers here. Amen. And some of you fathers listening. This was a young man. Yes. Even though he was backslidden Christian, I'm mean, not Christian, backslidden person, young man. Yes. But he had the character. He said, and he did it, whether it's good or bad. Yes. You as a man, 
If you say, I'm going to thank Father all the time now, you got to do it. Amen. Same thing, sisters, anybody. If you're going to say, I'm going to thank God, whether it's good or bad from now on all the time, then you got to do it. No matter what. You can't let the world, the flesh, and the devil keep on telling you, hey, 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 hey. you have a great reason to blame God. You have great reason to complain. There's no reason for you to complain. There's nothing for you to complain, you know, against God. And second point, why? You know, thank you, Father. Why? Because he is the hero. That's it. You know, when you see children, they say, you know, who's your hero? And they're like, that's my dad. My dad is a hero, right? When you look at the story, God the Father, he's the hero. He wants what's best for you, right? That's why you could thank him. He chastised you because he wants you to get right. That's right. Yes. I mean, for whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, right? And scourges every son whom he receiveth. Right? Hebrews 12, 6 and Proverbs 3, 12 says, For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth. Amen. Thank you, Father, for correcting me. Thank yes. you, Father, for chastening me. Can you believe it? The Lord God. It's more anxious than you for you to get right. Amen. When you're coming to the altar and getting right with the Lord, he's the one who's racing. He's receiving you. Yes. Think about it. When we look at this verse, this father's character, I mean, look how amazing. I mean, you can't, you cannot be like, get on your knees and say, thank you, father. Just like that. Why? Look at verse 23. And look at verse 22. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet, and bring hither the fatted calf. You know, calf doesn't get fat right away. It takes time. He was waiting for him to come back the whole time. He was getting ready to offer that fatted calf for the joyous occasion. Any of you who's still backslidden, God of the universe, God who created the galaxies, just waiting for you. Amen. He wants you to get right. Yes. You have to understand, we have an almighty God, Father to be thanked, who wants what's best for you. Amen. And if you neglect that, man, that's where you're worse than a bastard out there. Man, those bastards want to have somebody that they could look after. They yes. want to have someone they could call father. They want to have someone who they could look up to. Yes. You and I have that father. And we're no better than those, you know, bastards, those, you know, unthankful children out there. Amen. Yes. Don't you want this celebration? Look at verse 24. For this my son was dead and is alive again. I mean, spiritually speaking, I mean, how many of you guys are or have been spiritually dead? I mean, once you accept Christ doctrinally, you know, you're his son forever. But we're talking about Israel here anyways and God the Father. But when we are practically applying it as a backslidden Christians, you've slid enough. I mean, once you start realizing, man, on this Father's Day, I'm really going to thank my Father. And I'm going to get right. You know, all these things, you know, that's been holding me, I'm going to let it go. I'm going to cast it away once and for all. Amen. No more playing games. It's not just confessing. I'm going to just turn away from it once and for all. And you could enjoy. Verse 24, conclusion. What happened? And they began to be merry. Man, there's a singing and joy yes. up in glory land when you get right Amen. with the Lord. And that's something is up to you. Fathers, remember your responsibility, your accountability, who you are. The moral example, godly example that you have to be. And that includes everybody. Amen. On this Father's Day, remember 
how thankful you ought to be to God the Father and remember how unthankful you've been as his child yes. and how he's waiting for you to get right. And once you get right, it's going to be a joyous occasion. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Amen. Dear Father, you are our Father, Lord. Who can call you Abba Father? May you send your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, die for all of our sins, shedding his precious blood once and for all. And you saved us by just trusting our Lord and Savior. And you love us more than anything else, unconditional, eternal. But how many times have we rejected, neglected, abused it, run away from it, and backslid? Lord God, help us to get out of this unthankful state. Help us to be a thankful child of God. Help us to realize that whatever is happening in our life, you want the best for us. Help us to be that faithful child. Help us to know that you are our hero, Lord God. I mean, and treat you like hero, Lord. Instead of someone like an ATM machine, we only go to you when we need something. But help us to understand once and for all who you really are and how much thanksgiving we are to give you always. I pray that you'll bless the rest of the services and the moral prayer, Lord. Even so, come Lord Jesus, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.